Hello everyone. So today we'll be learning what is the REST, what is the REST API and how does this REST API works. So before moving to REST API, uh, you should know what is API and what is Web API. So if you have not watched our video, what is API and what is Web API, the video will be shown in the I button above. So go and watch that video so you would understand what is REST API in detail. So let's move on. What is REST API? So before knowing what is REST API, we should know what is REST. So the full form of REST is a representational state transfer. It was created by a computer scientist known as Roy Fielding. So what is REST? So REST is an architecture guideline which is used to develop APIs. So it is not any kind of a library, it is not any kind of a framework to follow. It is just a guideline which is developed for the developer to make their work easier. So now let's understand what is a REST API. So the API which is developed using REST is known as REST API or REST full API. So I would like to clear one thing over here is that the term REST and the RESTful means the same thing. So the, um, whenever the person says a REST API or RESTful API, the both the term means the same thing. Okay. So now let's understand. So now let's uh, understand how does this REST API work. But before let's see like how does the traditional things work over here. So for uh, in the current world, uh, let's say for example, we have developed some application in Django using HTML, CSS and JavaScript or some application in Laravel. So now to scale that application, now if you want to build an Android application or an iOS, iOS application for that application, it would be impossible. So this is where the API and the REST API uh, comes in the picture. So now we will be making an API. <clears throat> we will be making a REST API which uh, each of our client will be using. So the, it could be our Android application can use the same set of APIs. Our iOS can use the same set of APIs. Our web application can use the same set of APIs. They all will use the same set of APIs and will communicate with the web application and the databases. Okay. So now if in future, if you want to add some other kind of a client application over here, we could um, add it seamlessly. So for example, if you want to add a Python application over here. Okay. So now let's understand how does the REST, if REST web API works over here. So let's understand the components over here. There is a client, there is a web application, there is a web, um, there is a web API and there is a database. Okay. So now client makes an HTTP or HTTPS request to the web uh, REST API. Okay, then the API will communicate to the application and they would access database if they need need over here. Okay, and then the web application will provide the required data to the API and the API will bring that same data to the uh, client side. Okay, so one thing to note over here is that the data would be in the JSON data or the XML data. But in the most of the scenario, we use the JSON data over here, not the XML data over here. So in the future, in the later, explanation also will be demonstrating with the help of a JSON data. Okay. So now let's understand the most important concept that REST API solves for you. There is, that is a um, CRUD operation, C-U-R-D operation, create, read, update, delete operation. There are the other operations also over here, but the main focus of the REST API is in the CRUD operations. Okay. So now there are different kind of uh, now methods that this CRUD operation uses over here. Okay. So now, for example, if you want to get some kind of a data from the database, we'll be using the get method. If you want to make, uh, if you want to create the new data in the database, then we'll be using the post method. Now, if you want to update the data over here, so update are of a two type. So for example, there is a um, table which has the five columns. If you want to update all the five columns, we will be using the put method over here. If you want to update any one of the column, two of the column, three of the column, it's partial update. If you want to make, we'll be using the patch and uh, method over here. If you want to delete some kind of a row from the database, we will be using the delete method over here. Okay. So now let's understand the URL. Like how does the URL uh, mix for the APIs over here? Okay, so the blue thing over here is the base URL or the domain name of the um, API over here. Then the um, slash API is the naming convention. It's not a mandatory thing to write over there, but the um, it's as a, as a proper guideline. Now, if you write while writing the API, it indicates there is an API uh, forward over it. So it's a naming convention. Okay, the third is the endpoint. Post indicate that this um, uh, endpoint will give the data according, uh, according to posts over here. Okay, so now let's understand the get method. So we'll be going through each and every methods in detail over here. So first, let's understand the get method. Okay, so now if we now if you want to get the all the data from the database, we will be using the get method, and the endpoint is slash api slash post. It will give the list of all the objects of that data. 
Okay, now there might be a scenario where we don't want the all data but only one data from the database. So we will be using the endpoint slash API slash post and slash one. One indicate the ID. We want the data of this ID. So it will go in the database and check for the ID one and it and retrieve the data of that. So one thing, the one thing to note over here is that get method does not require any request uh, parameter over here. It only requires the endpoint and, the, and it will get the response. Now let's understand the post method. Now if you want to create a new entry in a database, then we will be using the post method over here and the endpoint will be slash API and slash post over here. Okay, and we need to pass the request object, uh, object over here. Uh, request object indicate that which data we need to create in the database. It would be in JSON format. So over here, we need to create a new data now which has a title of what is DRF. Okay, so it will go in the database and create this database with ID 3. Okay. So now, if you want to update this data, so, so over here, we will be passing the which data we need to update. So we will, we will be passing slash API slash post slash one. And what data we need to update, we need to pass that in request parameter. So in this uh, request parameter title, what is serialization? So the ID one will now change the uh, data to what is serialization. Okay. So now if you want to delete the data over here, so we need to pass to the endpoint slash API slash post one, we should delete this matter. In delete also, we don't need to pass any kind of a request object over here. So now let's summarize you all the uh, methods of which we learned over here. Uh, over, over here, okay. So now let's uh, let's see that we have the um, URL as https slash slash tsunami dot com slash api slash post. Okay. So in the read, we have two part. First, we've been getting the all the data. So the input would would be slash api slash post over here. If you want any single kind of a data, we'll be using slash api slash post slash one over here. So now if you want to create the method, we will be using the slash API slash post in the update part. There would have two type of update as we discussed earlier, put and um, patch. So it on the endpoint for them would be slash API slash post slash one. Okay. So now deleting the endpoint, it would be slash API slash post and slash one. Okay. So I hope you got the fair bit of idea. What is the rest? What is the rest API and how does the rest API work? Which are the different, different methods that we used, we used over you. If you have any doubt or query, please comment down in the video over there. Um, it would be great that if you could subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. Take care.